In this video, let's have a look at the concept of heteroscedasticity and how can that relate to the omitted variable. Now, I didn't say omitted variable bias because what we'll notice is that we don't have an actual bias here, but we do have an omitted variable in the model. So, for instance, let's take this graph. We have the relationship between income and food expenditure. Now, notice how the data would be distributed. This is actually something practical. I'm going to give an intuition why this could happen. Notice that in the beginning over here, the distribution is pretty uniform around the blue line, around the regression line. So over here, let's call that income, uh, you know, $2,000 a month. Let, let that be $2,000 a month. But once someone earns above $2,000, it goes up to $6,000 $6, for instance. Notice, notice how much variation we have in the food expenditure. Why would that be the case? Because that person who earns now $6,000, he might be a really busy a businessman who does not really have time to eat fancy food so he does not invest a lot in food he might be eating the same thing that he used to eat when he was more poor so over here let's call that the middle class who eat pretty much the same amount right let's say the food expenditure over here is gonna be um, $200 per month so $200 per month that's on average so they might eat things like you know rice milk relatively cheap food and over here, once they get richer, once they get richer, there's some people who still eat rice and milk for $200 a month, or they might go even lower. It depends on their preference. And the keyword here is preference, which we're going to discuss in a second. But there are people who are going to go to eat $500 a month. Why would they eat $500 a month? They have the money and for them, food is a big part of their life. They really like expensive things like caviar and wine. So that's what they have for dinner instead of rice and milk. That's the difference. Now, why would that be the case? And why do we have heteroscedasticity? Well, what is heteroscedasticity? Skedasticity to begin with. That is a non constant variance. So the error term varies in a non constant way. Uh, let's write it like that. The variance of the error term, which is the unexplained term over here, is a function of the independent variable. It depends on the income. The higher the income, the more variance we have in the error term because the errors are becoming larger and larger. You see these green lines? The difference between the observed values and the regressed values on the blue line. This is our variance. And these, these are our error terms and the variation is the error terms to the power of two and we add them up. So this becomes larger and larger when income increases. So it is a function of income. The higher the income, the more variation in the error term. It's a function of the independent variable. Let's call that xi. Now, this is not constant. This is not a certain constant value. So it is not a certain constant value. That gives us a heteroscedasticity problem because now we cannot regress accurately. We are missing something. In other words, our estimate, our beta slope coefficient is not the best estimate that we can have. So in econometrics, we have this concept called blue, which stays for best linear unbiased estimator. And this estimate that we're having right now of the slope coefficient is no longer best. But notice it is still linear and it is still unbiased. Why is it unbiased? That's something we're going to discuss in the next video because even though we're omitting a variable, we are not suffering from omitted variable bias. We'll see it in a bit.